Hello, everybody. It is Tuesday night, and that means it's 9 o'clock, Tuesday Night Live with Rick and Brett from Cairo Destiny. And uh, tonight's sort of special for us. We had our first Cairo Destiny Live seminar, our virtual seminar on, uh, on the Internet over this past weekend. We had 80-something uh, people that joined us, chiropractors and CAs, for an amazing Friday night, an all-day Saturday event. Uh, it went beautifully. We're really excited. We're coming off a high. So now two days later, um, no coincidences, by the way, that we had scheduled one of our all-time favorites, a dear friend, a mentor to all of us, Richard Flint. Welcome to Cairo Destiny. Thanks, Rick. Glad to be here. <laughs> I've, I've missed y'all. Way too it's, long. It's just so nice to see you. And and again, what, what uh, we had told people, this is our 27th week straight of doing this. And for us, selfishly, we've gotten to reconnect with some old friends that have influenced us. And therefore, we wanted to give a chance to influence all of our friends, chiropractors, chiropractic assistants. Um, so the first question I would certainly ask is, what have you been up to? It's, you know, you're a guy who lives on the road and lives on stage. So things go a little crazy. We'd love to hear what you're up to and how you've adapted to what's been going on. Well, Rick, it's been very interesting because, you know, when I looked at my schedule the first the year for this year, uh, it was full. Everything I wanted was on there and my year was set. And then all of a sudden, in the matter of two days, someone brought out a big eraser <laughs> and just uh, erased everything. And like so many people, I found myself standing on the edge of the unknown. And when you're a driven person, when you're an entrepreneur, when you are someone who likes to achieve, and all of a sudden, something out of your control brings out a big eraser and sort of just erases a lot of what you had planned. And you stand there in the middle of the unknown. And there is a certain amount of fear that goes with that. Uh, there's a certain amount of uncertainty that goes with that. And you, you find yourself just standing there and in some ways mentally paralyzed and emotionally being challenged. I, I've talked with so many people and a lot of chiropractors who are part of my morning minute and I sat there and I, we talk. And the thing that I hear the most is I, I've got to figure out what I have to now be doing to go forward. And over these past months, what I've done is I've talked to well over a hundred uh, business owners and leaders and have really had some very in-depth questions with them about where are you? Where are you struggling? And from that, I took the consistencies that I heard and I put together six virtual seminars uh, that I've been doing uh, virtually all over the world. I just finished a group of uh, 350 people from Australia and mm. just trying to help people to come to grips with you're either going to respond or react to what's going on. And this is a time where my, my three P's that I try to teach people on a daily basis that you've got to get your pace right right now. Because when you and I stand in the unknown, the tendency is for most people, they're emotionally going to speed up. And in doing that, sometimes what they try to do is they try to create when what they need to be doing is taking a, a deep breath and observing and seeing what is. And beyond the pace, right now, you're going to have to be patient. And for a driven entrepreneur or for someone who is really a person who wants to succeed, uh, patience sometimes is a challenge. And I know that there are a lot of doctors that it's challenging for them to be patient. And then why are we at the right pace and patience? We also, though, have to be persistent and having a, a purpose and a plan that we can work. Uh, one of the things that I'm seeing today is the, the number of collisions that are happening emotionally uh, with leaders and their people, because the agenda has really been upset. And 
you know, I I was telling you and and, and Rick, um, Brett, that the probably the biggest program that I've written that I'm doing right now is establishing a a mindset that will allow you to have the clarity and the purpose right now to continue to move forward. And that mindset is based on three A's and they come in one order and each creates its own set of challenges for most people. The first A is that you've got to be willing to adapt. And I don't know if you see this as much as I do, most people don't want to change until they're forced to. Mm, right. Because yeah. most people establish, even in business, they establish a business routine that they're very comfortable with. And I would imagine when y'all do your consulting with doctors, you find sometimes even doctors are resistant. 100%. To doing what they know they need to do. And with this, with this new abnormal and I hate it when people talk about this is the new normal. This is not the new normal. This is the new abnormal. And because it's abnormal, we don't know what to do with it. Because we've not faced anything like this, it, it, this, this unknown, uh, this uncontrollable, this uncertainty is just playing with people emotionally. So the first thing you got to do is you got to look at your business and you just got to ask yourself, okay, here's where we are. Here's where, what's in front of us. We're not sure. You know, for me, it's challenging to plan right now because when you're living in the unknown, it's challenging to plan. So anything you do is a guess. And so right now, as you adapt, if your pace, your patience, and your persistency are not there, you're going you're gonna to just make guesses that are going to come back to bite you. And I've got to slow down. I've got to pay attention to what's happening out there. I've got to feel the presence of my patients and understand where they are too. And I've got to adapt my business to really deal with people as to where they are and what their real needs are right now. Mm. You know, I, I, again, I don't know if y'all see this or not, but I've never seen stress in the lives of people as I'm seeing it today. Definitely. Yeah. And, and they're just, they're just, they're, they're a bundle of nerves. Uh, my massage therapist that I go to is telling me, he said, Richard, in all my years, and he's been a massage therapist for about 40 years. And he told me, I've never seen the anxiety in people than what I'm seeing today. Mm. And sometimes anxiety is tied to fear. And when we tie fear to change, we want to just stop and wait. And people tell me all the time, it's going to be okay. Things are going to come back the way they were. No, they're not. So right now I've got to have a mindset that says, I need to look at where I am. I need to pay attention to what's happening. And I need to know where I need to adapt my business in order to create a pathway for it. Now, once I figure out where I need to adapt, the second A is, I need to adjust. And I think from what I'm seeing with people that I'm talking to, adjusting <laughs> is more frightening than adapting. I can figure out what I need to do. But then all of a sudden what happens, now I got to take where I know I need to adapt and I got to make the adjustments. And it's challenging for a lot of people to adjust. Because adapting is talking. Adjusting is action. Right. Why, why do you think people have struggled with taking the necessary action steps? Is well, just fear and the anxiety? Yeah, it, it, because we live in routines. Right, right. I mean, you've got to see this in the world where the two of you live and with the doctors that y'all deal with. Right. Is that you look at them and you talk to them about where they need to adapt and they'll agree with you. Then you come back and have another conversation with them. Have you made the adjustments? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, and I hear this all the time. It's not the right time. Mm -hmm. No, you're just fearful of doing it. Right. What's well, interesting for us is we've seen, and we talked about this this weekend, 70% of our members have broken their all-time record during COVID. 
they're all time records, regardless of how many years of practice, because where you said mindset, where, as you know, for Cairo Destiny, we spend so much time getting their minds right and their mindset ready for success orientation, for goal setting, for action steps, for consistency, decisiveness, confrontation, and then also quieting the mind, understanding the law of attraction and universal laws. And then we speak to chiropractors on the outside that have not been dipped into our headspace and our philosophies and our teachings over the years. And that's where you start to see that paralysis. Yeah. And, you know, it, it is a mindset. And the, the mindset is built around knowing my purpose, having an agenda that everybody agrees to, mm -hmm. and then having the commitment where we're in this together. You know, let me, let me just share this with y'all real quickly, because it's something that I've really been looking at in, in depth for the last four or five months. I think the biggest challenge with most people is that they don't slow down and look at the foundation of their life. And all lives are built on a foundation. And I think that there are basically two foundations that people build their life on. And if any of you can come up with another foundation, you share it with me because I've only found two that we either build the foundation on our, of our life on our belief in ourselves and what we're doing, the trust that we have in ourselves that we can do it, and the faith to take the risk to step into the unknown and turn it into adventure. And when you show me someone that has a mindset like that, not even a virus is going to stop them because they're going to adapt. They're going to adjust. But you've got a second foundation out there. And that second foundation is based in doubt. And what happens when you start doubting yourself or you start doubting what you're doing? And it's humanly impossible for you and I to doubt without bringing worry into the picture. And when doubt and worry come together, they create a very powerful enemy. Because that's where I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm fearful of doing everything, anything. And when doubt and worry come together, the paralyzing part of this is now that I am uncertain. And when I'm, I'm uncertain, the easiest thing I can do is go back and talk about yesterday. Go back and try to relive business as it used to be and try to re recreate something that we can't recreate today. And it doesn't take long talking to people to find out which of those foundations they're building their life and their business on. Either their belief, their trust, and their faith, or their doubt, their worry, and their uncertainty. And when you're building it on the doubt, the worry, and the uncertainty, making those adjustments are really, really challenging. And, and then you've got a, a third A. you got to adapt, you've got to adjust, and then you've got to align yourself. And this is where, you know, as any business, be it a chiropractic or whatever it is, you've got to make sure your people are on the same track that you're on. Because what happens in a practice if you got the doctor going one way, but you got the staff going another way? You know, there is just constant emotional, emotional turmoil and the constant coll uh, collisions that are there. And, but if you, can, if you can bring these three A's into what you're doing and be willing to say, okay, here's where I need to adapt. Adapting is going to create these adjustments and I, I, I'm going to be fearful in making these adjustments because they're going to take me out of my comfortable routine, but I know I've got to do it. And then here's where I have to realign. And would it be safe to say that with a lot of the doctors that y'all work with, that what you're guiding them toward and basically is, ba is being built around those three A's? Yeah, the, the thing that I would ask you is when you know what you need to do, and I, I hate that word need, but you know what you're supposed to do, have to do, need to do, 
to stabilize your business, to stabilize a relationship with the kids, with home life, with business life, with customers or patients, whatever. It, and some people feel somewhat paralyzed or powerless to do what needs to be done based on the fear, worry, and doubt. What do you use as that linchpin to flip it and cause that person to get into action? Well, first of all, uh, and this is one of this is one of the purposes for what y'all are about and what has to be done, what most people don't have. You got to have a solid support group. You've got to have people that you can reach out to where you can strengthen that foundation of belief, that foundation of trust, that foundation of faith that you have. And when you can surround yourself mm -hmm. with people who share that, it gives you the strength because when you have belief, trust, and faith working together, the byproduct of that is confidence. And confidence is the visual demonstration of my belief, my trust, and my faith. And you got to have that support group. But mm -hmm. the other thing that I, I see, you, you've you also got to make sure this is what you still want to be doing. I mean, there are there are a lot of practices out there and I was talking to a doctor two weeks ago, and he told me, he said, Richard, he said, this is as short as shaking me to my core. And it's caused me to rethink, do I want to continue to do this? Because he says, I've, I've, I've brought, I'm, I'm living in a time where I'm really doubting myself. And I think every now and then, all of us need to do a gut check. I mean, I did it. <clears throat> uh, I did it whenever, you know, all of a sudden I saw that big giant eraser come out. And I sat there and thought, I've worked 32 years to get where I am. And how, come, how can this little microcosm that I can't even see come in and rearrange my life to the point that it's done that? And so I had to sit down and ask myself my four questions of life. What do I really want? And is what I'm doing with my life today exactly what I want to do? Or have I been doing it because it's the only thing I've done for 32 years? Right. And is it the only thing that I know? Because if my answer to that is, this is not what I want to be doing, then I'm never going to be able to think about adapting, adjusting, and aligning. <coughs> and I came to a place where I said, yes, this is what I really want to be doing with my life. And then I asked myself the second question, why do I want to do this? And I think one of the, one of the basic things that, that, is, that needs to happen right now is that this will take us back to basics. It takes us back to the basics of who we are and why we're doing what we're doing. And I had to ask myself, you know, why do you want to do this? And for me, it's the belief that I'm doing exactly with my life what God wants me to do. That I'm exactly where I need to be. And I don't need to run away because I'm uncertain or I'm dealing with unknown. I just need to take a deep breath and pause and say, okay, this is what I'm dealing with. I still want to do this. So how do I adapt, adjust? How do I realign myself? And then my third question is, you know, what price am I willing to pay to do this? Because with everything you and I want to do with our life, there's a price tag. And the price is where we make the decisions about whether we're willing to take a risk or not. Whether we're going to let the unknown become a point of paralyzing us, or are we going to turn it into an adventure that's going to challenge us to come back and be creative all over again. I've talked to people who have told me, and y'all said it just a minute ago, that this is the most exciting time they say they've ever lived. Yeah. And there are people out there today that are doing more business than they've ever done because they've not given in to fear. And they're realizing, hey, I can still bring purpose and value out there. I just got to be willing to look, adapt, adjust, and align. And then my fourth question, which is me, is always the big question. What behaviors do I need to improve? 
because of what I'm learning about myself that will help me be, to become better, to become smarter and become stronger with what I'm doing. And, you know, y'all know my three little words, behavior never lies. And that the, the definition of truth is not what you say, it's what you do. And I think this is testing a lot of people right now. And, you know, life is a continuation of test. And what I see happening right now is just one giant test that's causing us to slow down and have to regroup. And that's not necessarily a negative. No, no. Because how many people do you know that are moving so fast, they're so busy being busy, they don't even know what they're busy doing? Right. I mean, and you can be busy and be out of control. And when life rearranges itself without your permission, you got one of two choices. I'm going to react to what's happening or I'm going to respond to it. And which one of those I choose depends on my foundation of belief, trust, and faith, our doubt, worry, our uncertainty. And I see this as a real test of commitment right now. You know, one of the things that we teach at Cairo Desk because we work with a lot of chiropractors, along the lines of what you're saying here, that mindset or headspace is, is really what success is all about. 90% of success is headspace and mindset. Unfortunately, in our vast dealings with chiropractors over the last 15, 20 years, is that most people don't work hard enough on themselves. So Jim Rohn was always said to say, work harder on yourself than you do on your vocation and you'll become mm -hmm. successful. So as you're saying, when you're clear about who you are, when your purpose is strong enough and the why behind everything that you do, then you got to get to work on daily habits that will pick you up in times of stress, doubt, fear, anxiety, which is what we're all going through now. So to sit back and, and do nothing obviously isn't the answer. I agree. Take a step back, get introspective, start to ask yourself better questions and figure out who you really are and what you really want out of life. Assuming now, since most of our audience is probably chiropractors, assuming you still want to be a chiropractor, you've got to get to work on fixing this first. It's always been that way. It will always continue to be that way. And I've always said, when the mind is right, the body will follow. When the mind is right, the action steps of the next steps that you need to take will come. But you have to develop daily habitual routines. And everything that you're saying now is exactly what we're talking about. When yeah, and this, right, this is one of the reasons that 12 years ago, I created my morning minute, 100%. Uh, which is where every day. We'll put, I and by sit, the way, we'll put a link up for those people who want to get your morning minute. Well, I'd like to offer a gift to everyone that's on here tonight or everyone that watches this. Yeah. I'd like to give you my morning minute for the next 30 days as a gift from me to awesome. you. Thanks. And if you're not sure what the morning minute is, every morning I send you a 60 second video email with one of my philosophies of life and a piece of wisdom. Every month, every month is a different theme. That's every awesome. day is a different philosophy. Right. And, you know, if you're not part of my morning minute, experience it with me for 30 days. And all you got to do is reach out to me, Richard at richardflint.com. Give me your name and your email address, and I'll put you on the morning minute for the next 30 days as a free gift from me to you. I, my major concern right now and it's the thing that is driving me right now is I'm paying attention to the human condition because I think the human condition is under a brutal attack today because it's not just this virus we're dealing with. I mean, we're, there's things coming at us on every front. And I ask people all the time, where can you go in your life right now where you feel stable? Where can you put your feet right now where you can say, I can stand here and not worry, not be fearful because I feel stability at this. And I'll tell you something. Most people just look at me and the majority will tell me, I don't have that place right now. Mm -hmm. No, that's their, their, the avoidance behavior of binge watching TV or you know, sort of hunkering down in their own homes because that's, it's easy because that's what I'm supposed to do. Get caught up. That's just physical. It's not, that's not here. They've also 
started to hibernate and lock themselves in mentally, not just physically. Well, you and I either live from our mind down or our emotions up. And what's happening right now are people, even people who have lived from their mind down, because of this unknown, because of this uncertainty, right now, all of a sudden, they find themselves in a different space, and they're living from their emotions up. And they don't know what to do with that. And they need to learn how to take a deep breath and get back in sync with their self. Get back to basics. Anytime a life is out of control, the thing that's happening is that they've stopped doing something they were doing that was important and their life is out of sync. Your mind down will always keep your life in sync and will always give you the direction that you need to go. But when you're living from your emotions up, that's when you start asking all the wrong questions. Mm. Right, I think you told us there is no such thing as a good answer to a bad question. Yep. Yep. And, you know, if you're looking, to, looking for a time to make the perfect decision, you'll never make a decision. <laughs> and, you know, I don't know if y'all hear this or not, but I hear it a lot from people is that I'm just going to wait this out. We've been, we've been Keep imploring waiting. people not to. Right. <laughs> Keep yeah. waiting. But that's the result of fear. That's the result of fear. Because when you put doubt, worry, and uncertainty together, it becomes the foundation to fear. And you know, sometimes when we're fearful, we start listening to all the wrong people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you know, I... I I'm really proud of you guys, and I'm, I'm proud of what you're doing and what Cairo Destiny is about, because what you're doing is you're really trying to help people to understand there's never been a time more important than now that you have to believe in yourself, that you have to trust yourself and the fact that maybe you've never been through this before, but you've got successes in your life you can go back and learn from. And then you've got to, you've got to have the faith that says, you know what? I'm not, I'm not really sure what to do, but I'm not going to sit here and do nothing. And Larry just texted and said, tell Richard that after adapt, adjust, and align, you could add the fourth one, which would be attitude. Yeah, absolutely. Because attitude will control all three of those. And you know, what are you feeding your mind? Belief, trust, and faith? Doubt, worry, or uncertainty? What are you feeding your mind? Because you're feeding your mind based on one of those two foundations. And whichever foundation you have creates the choice you're going to make that plans the direction that then institutes the behavior that's going to take you where that foundation is going to lead you. I got, I got a question for you, Richard. So we're talking about feeding the mind and all these wonderful things. And obviously, I couldn't agree more with you. What are some, if you're mentoring somebody who's struggling, they're, they're paralyzed by fear and all that, what are some things that they can do to feed their mind from your point of view? Well, they've got to admit they're fearful. Yep. That's where it all starts. Right. And number two, where's this fear coming from? What is creating this element of fear in my life? And then number three, why am I giving into it? Why am I giving into this fear? And then the fourth thing is, what do I need to do now to step through it? You can't step beyond fear until you step through it. Right. So that's why it all starts with, you know, where's this fear coming from? What am I afraid of? And I'm watching people today that I thought were some of the most confident people I've known. And all of a sudden, because the ground underneath their feet cracked. Mm -hmm. And you can be successful and not be prepared for success. If you judge success by the volume of business you're doing, when something like this little virus comes and creates an unknown, it will show you that success was an illusion, not a journey you have designed to keep you going for it. 
You know, I think back to the first times I sat in your audiences um, in terms of the things that I took away. Obviously, behavior never lies is number one. But the other thing I took away from you is your level of consistency. Um, if, I re if I recall, you're up at four o'clock every morning writing. Well, I, right now I'm up a lot earlier. I'm, I'm in my office here because uh, I'm in my home in Virginia right now. I'm, I'm at my desk here by 3.30 every morning. Right. So that consistency was a model for me to find the thing that inspires you, where you find that quiet time and that journaling time and that writing time where there's nothing else happening and it's just a way for you to be thought through and your process was to just vomit out anything onto the page that comes up for you and figure it out later. It wasn't about the perfect word. It was just be willing to be thought through. And once it's out there, you could see that there is greatness inside you and there is some bravery inside you. And there is the answer already if you can quiet the mind enough and then somehow have a journey or some sort of action to get it out. For you, it was writing. Yeah. And Rick, what I want for my life more than anything is I want to t take the uniqueness of my life that God has given me. And I want to create a presence that has a positive presence when I'm not present. And to me, that's the greatest statement of respect that can be paid to any person. Is that every day what I do is I work every day to achieve three things. I want to be better. I don't want to become lackadaisical. I know that there's more for my life. I mean, I've now written 19 books. I've got two more that are coming out. I've got five more that are outlined that I will write. I want to be better. And I also want to be smarter. You know, I, I pray every day that God will give me wisdom. And to me, the opposite of wisdom is stupidity. <laughs> And I want wisdom. And wisdom is the ability to see through what is and find the lesson that is in there. There is a lesson in everything, whether it's negative or positive, there's a lesson in there for us. And I want the wisdom to discern what that lesson is. And then I want to be stronger. I want to be stronger in my belief, my trust, and my faith where that when something like this comes at me and an eraser comes out and just rearranges my life, that I don't go, oh, what am I going to do now? But I say, you know what? I have the ability to be creative and I am going to listen and learn and create so that I can continue to bring a message of value to people. And these six new virtual seminars that I've written are all about bringing value to people. I've got three chiropractic offices coming up in the next month and a half where I'm actually doing virtual, where I'm training their staff. And we're training their staff on behavior never lies. And what do we have to do to continue to make an, have an impact on people? Because a lot of people who are walking into the chiropractor's office today, they're uncertain. And they're living at a time in their life that they've never lived in before. And that doctor becomes a healing agent on more than one front. You know, a lot of people say, I've heard it said, that, you know, everything happens for a reason. We, we could look at this whole abnormal new world going on right now as something to happen for a reason whether it caused a big eraser, erasure for you, for some people it's negative, for some people it's positive. What do you believe is some of the reasoning behind this? Okay. Through the experience that you've had up to now. I'm just curious. Okay. Uh, Philosophical I'm just, question. Yeah, I'm just going to be on the table with you because this gets me in trouble sometimes. <laughs> but I believe that as a country, one of the things we've done, <laughs> we've sort of worked to push God out of this country. Mm-hmm. And I think that there is a message that's being said to us that you may think you're powerful, but you're not as powerful as I am. And I think this is creating an, a, a spiritual awakening within this country. 
And that spiritual awakening, I think, is going to be manifested and it's going to show itself. Uh, I, I think that this is also something that is designed to make people slow down. Mm. Yep. I mean, look at how fast people have lived. You know, my motto for my life for basically 32 years was fast and furious. Let me see how many frequent flyer miles I can get. Let me see how many engagements I can do. And I am a road warrior, and I know what a jet setter is. It is get on a jet and fly and set there to the next city. But the motto of my life and purpose of my life now is different than fast and furious. Mm. It's about pace that allows me to be patient enough to learn from what's being presented to me today. And I'll tell you, I'll tell both of you this. I've probably learned more in the past five months than I've learned in a long time. And, and in all reality, I'm busier today than I was when I was living on the road. Mm. Because I'm now slowed down and I'm really opening up my creative self. And I'm more creative today than I've probably ever been. And my mind is just open and ideas are just flowing out of it. And I'm, I'm listening at a level that I've never listened before. And I think what you just said is, is what I've been thinking about for a long time is that it's forcing people to look one at themselves. We talk introspective more than they ever have. And it's forcing people to be more creative than ever before, right? Because you have to now, through adaptability, they're forced to now create or recreate. And I think that, you know, may propel us as a country forward, which I, or as a world even, I think that was sorely needed. Well, so one you, of our, and one, one of the things that we have always experienced was find other people that have done it successfully and just model mimic and plagiarize and steal their actions. Cause why reinvent the wheel? Right. We're all in this together. No one right. has experience with this. Right. You're forced to look in, you can't look outside. Right. And we're saying, okay, I got nowhere to go other than my own creativity, my own insight, my own value system, my own team. You know, Richard, I know you spend so much time working with team dynamics. Uh, just to share a personal story, um, I have also a, a big hello from you from my partner, Eric Hoder. Um, uh, when Eric was an associate of mine 17 and a half years ago and became a partner, um, he said, you're making me crazy. And he and I drove up a, few, a couple hours to go to Palm Beach. And we sat, at, Eric said, we sat in a Shoney's uh, or a Denny's or something like that. And you explained the interworkings of the true dynamics of partnership, of teamwork, of understanding. And he and I, 17 years later, you know, are almost coming up on 18. In December, it'll be 18. Uh, because of that one meeting we had with you for two hours, it's been, you know, the marriage made in heaven and helping, you know, so many thousands of patients because of that ability for you to understand the dynamics of what makes a team work. So now, like you said, all of these teams have nobody else to look into other than themselves in their four walls. What are you saying to these teams? How are you getting them to Stay, slow down and sit down together and create a new reality or a new vision for themselves or to realign with a purpose. Well, and you just use the word that I start with. And the word is, as an organization, what's your purpose? Yep. What is your purpose? Because a lot of organizations, as they grow, they lose their purpose. And it becomes more about money than it is about people. And you, y'all have seen this. I mean, for a long time in the world of business, it was people, service, profit. And all of a sudden, greed set in, and it became profit, service, and people. And we lost our purpose. And if our purpose is to make money, and that's our purpose, then we're a con artist. And you've got to get back to what's your pur what's our purpose in being in business? And then what's our agenda? How are we going to do this together? And then are you committed as a partnership? Are you committed to making this happen? 
And if you're not, if you're not going to work with us, if you're not committed to us and helping us with this purpose and partnership, this purpose and this agenda, we don't need you. And what I'm finding out there today too, is that there are a lot of businesses that are now taking a deep breath and looking at their people and saying, you know what? These people aren't with us. They're against us. And they're willing to let them go. And, and because it's your people that become your strength. It's that office staff that becomes your strength. And the doctor by himself is only a doctor. But the doctor with the right people around him becomes a force of healing. Because healing today has taken on a, a much, much larger perception than what it has been in the past. But you got to have a common purpose, a common agenda, and a common commitment with your people. That's how you're going to grow today. Well, I think it's in the interest of time, you know, we're going to start to, to conclude. I would say we wanted you on here because of your clarity, of the succinct but powerful message that you bring to, to us as a profession, that you've been bringing to us as a profession for um, 20, 25 years. It just feels like since I've been in practice all these years. And can't thank you enough for sharing some of your experiences and thought processes and so forth. So in the end, you have the ear of the chiropractic profession right now. What would you say to our profession in order for us to really thrive in the next one to five years? What does it look like for you? Slow down. Look at where you need to adapt. And don't be afraid of adapting. Mm -hmm. Have the belief, the trust, and the faith where you take that, where you need to adapt, and you're going to make those adjustments. And you're going to make them not because you have to, but because you understand that's what we've got to do to continue to bring value. And value is a huge word. Mm. And then let's align ourselves so that we can make sure that we can deliver what we say we're going to deliver because behavior does not lie. Yeah. Up the mic on that one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Can, can I invite your people to two things before we run? Please, Please absolutely. Of Number one, I am serious. If you'll reach out to me, Richard at richardflint.com, and just give me your name and your email address and say, Richard, I'd like to have your morning minute for the next 30 days. I will sign you up. I will give it to you as my gift to you. And, Kim and then the second that in the chat already. Yeah. And then the second thing is every Friday. We do a Zoom open mic classroom at 10 a.m. in the morning. And what I do every Friday is I put out a question. And our question for this Friday is, what is the biggest mistake you've ever made in your life? And what have you learned from it? And I do about a five-minute introduction. And then we just open the mics. Mm -hmm. And people get to share. And I tell people, come as a student, but be prepared to be a teacher. And just the learning process as we listen to one another, as we talk about this. And it's Friday morning, 10 a.m. You have to register for the classroom because we only have so many seats. And it's on my website, richardflint.com. Uh, you can just register for our Zoom class. It's every Friday morning at 10 a.m. Uh, and it's become like a family. That's uh, great. And that's what people refer to it. This is our Friday morning family class. Debbie Crawford said, thank you for last Friday. She loved it. Yeah. Because uh, last Friday, our question was, you know, what do you want for the future of this country? Oof. 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 And I tell you what, it was an interesting discussion. And I would invite anybody and everybody, you know, join us Friday morning, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Just go to richardflint.com and register. Beautiful. Give awesome. me 30 days in your life, folks, with the morning minute, and I'll show you a pathway forward like you've never seen. Well, so we, we've been following you for decades now, and we consider you, again, a friend and a, a, a mentor, and not just for us personally, but also to the chiropractic profession. There have been thousands of chiropractors who have grown monumental businesses and made a huge impact in their communities because of your teachings. Um, 
we can only say that we miss you and we love you and we thank you not only for sharing tonight with us, but uh, your spirit, your generosity. And uh, the only thing Brett and I can only wish for and hope for is that we get to share a stage again soon when some of this craziness is over. Um, please continue to do what you're doing and get up even earlier and keep writing uh, because everything you put out, we're picking up. Right. And uh, so, you know, so, so are the thousands and thousands of thousands of others out there. Let me um, come back again. Let please. me come back again sometime. I'd love this. We'd love to have you, Richard. Anytime, my friend. We love you. Yeah, and be sure and tell be sure and tell your dad that he's still a continual research project for me. <laughs> well, again, he said as soon as you get back to Florida, we're all getting together. You got it. All right. All right, Richard. Again, thank you so much. Good night, Thanks, everybody. Richard. Thank you. We'll see you next Tuesday night on Tuesday Night Live with Cairo Destiny. Thanks, Richard. Appreciate it. Thank you, everybody. Thank you all very much. Good night.